I'm going to verse 7. Faith. 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 Faith is more than just being talked about. Faith is an action. Amen. By faith. By faith. We read how great things were done. Through faith. Not someone else's faith, but your faith. Your personal faith. Today I want to talk a little bit about the faith of Noah. Noah. The Bible said as it was in the days of Noah. We're in those days. Eating, drinking, marriage, giving in marriage. In other words, not paying attention to the time. Hebrews 11, chapter 7. Stand to let's read the word. Person. Gather. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Father, it's always in the name of Jesus that we thank you, God, for all things. And this morning, I thank you for this word. God, I thank you for this word. And I know it's a written word, but Lord, you're the, the living word. So I'm going to combine the living word with the written word this morning. And I ask for a demonstration. I ask for a manifestation. And I ask for the word, Lord, to plow deep this morning and give a great harvest. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Reading this the other day uh, about Noah and his faith. Raymond Hart is going through a test of faith today. He's not the only one. Others are also. But the little situation that happened this morning, I thought, adds to his battle of faith. And I felt impressed while ago. It has to do with you and me. We may as well get ready to fight. Not flesh and blood, but a spiritual fight. Amen. 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 We may as well gird up the loins of our mind and get in the ring because you're in the battle whether you want to be or not. Amen. You're in the fight whether you want to be or not. That's right. So we may as well take everything, every message we've ever heard, every lesson we've ever heard, every song we've ever heard, we need to take everything that we know about the promises of God and start holding on to them Amen. and walking this thing out. That's right. But by faith, Noah, being warned of God, mm -hmm. of things not seen as yet. Now, he did all this by faith. When he was warned of God, how many times has the Lord warned us, say, in the last year about things that we, we didn't see coming. So many things the Lord warned us about, and we did not see that coming. It said here that by faith Noah was warned of God of things not seen as yet. And my mind went back. I, I shared this nearly every week. But when the Lord said about a year ago that a pestilence was going to come out of the east and that people would be running to hide because of this pestilence, which is a deadly disease. And so we've seen that come to pass. But you know the Lord spoke about that before it happened. Some of you wrote it down. And then a few months back, well, end of last year, the Lord spoke to pray to have prayer revival. Every month, the rest of this year, have prayer revival. Every first Sunday night, Monday night and Tuesday night, every month, the first week, prayer revival. The Lord told us that before this virus hit. But it said Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, he moved with fear or he moved with reverence. Now, as far as I know, just because the Lord spoke that 
does not mean that people are doing that. It doesn't mean that we have obeyed that. Do you think the Holy Ghost knew that the church would not obey that when he spoke it? Do you feel like that he really expected us to obey it when he spoke us? Spoke it? What do you feel like he meant for us to do with those words when he spoke them? When he said a pestilence will come from the east and people will be running and hiding, what do you think he meant for us to do with those words? The word said, what will you do with Jesus? You do with Jesus the same thing that we're doing with his word. You think, no, I reverence Jesus more than I know how to express. Yes, we do. But when he speaks and tells us to do these things, does that bring a fear or a reverence? How do we handle that? What will we do with Jesus? By faith being warned. <coughs> Did we take that as a warning when the Lord said that, that a deadly disease is going to come and people will be trying to hide themselves from it? You know, with this mask, <coughs> goggles, yeah. everything, we're trying to hide from the very thing the Holy Ghost said is coming. But what else did we do? When the Lord said, pray, have prayer revival. What are we going to do with that? What have we done with that? Or did we take it as a warning? But it said here, of things not seen. You know, Moses told people one time, he, God said, Moses, you tell people to wash their clothes, to fast. Because in three days, something is going to happen that they've never seen before. Now, when the Lord told Moses to tell the people what to do, did God really expect Moses to tell the people? Did the people really believe that God told him to tell them that what are we doing with Jesus? What are we doing with his word? In the beginning was the word, the word was, was with God, and the word was God. So what are we doing with the word? What are we doing with it? And does God really expect his people to obey? Does he really expect the church to obey when he speaks and tells us these things? God expected Noah being warned of something he'd never seen before, but he moved with respect or reverence. And he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He began to prepare an ark to the saving of his house. Now, by the which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness which is, is by faith. Now, being warned of God, being moved with reverence, and then preparing an ark. Three phases here. And I began to think of things that, that we need to be aware of. If you've been listening to the news lately, you've been listening to some, to some things that will shake our reason. One thing I heard is this. They've got these drones now that can fly over you and read your blood pressure. A drone flying hundreds of feet overhead, flying over, can actually take your blood pressure. 
Now that, to me, is scary. Amen. Worse than that. It's scary. Yes, it is. That something you may not even see, you know, they don't. They don't make a sound like an ordinary airplane. But when they fly off as it was in the days of Noah, I'm telling you, the word said that those days that men's heart was upon evil continually and things got so corrupt that God told Noah, he said, Noah, I've heard the cry of some people down there. I've heard some people cried out to me. I've heard some people lifting their voice, Noah, about the evil that's down there. And he said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go down and I'm going to see if it's as bad as they're saying it is in their prayer. When we pray, how do we pray our prayers? I believe I heard from the Holy Ghost while ago, not in, in tongues, not on the voice, but I believe that I heard from God when he said you better go into a fighting mode. That means rise up and don't take everything the devil dishes out to you. Amen. This flesh part cannot win our battle. But there's a thing called the inner man. The spirit man. It's called the Holy Ghost. That has got to rise up and do for us what the flesh cannot do. But no one was moved with fear. What would it take to bring fear on the church again? What would it take to bring reverence back? to the church? And what would it take to really trigger something in our brain to say, girl, you'd better start reverencing this thing, the Word of God, because what you do, your prayers, your prayer can help form a shelter for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren in the end time. There is a devil out there, I know, that used to walk. You see, it's not there now. The devil that, that you fight every day, he's not up there now covering the mercy seat. That devil that you and I contend with every day, used to be the very bird, as Raymond says sometimes, that old bird. He used to be up there guarding the mercy seat. I mean, he walked in and out among the coals of fire. He knows the secrets of the living God. Amen. He knows, I said, it's time, my children. It's time. It's time. Souls are in jeopardy. It's time. For you to build you an ark, not a bulrush, not a goat's hair, but build you an ark of my word, blood, fire, and water. Let every prayer count. Let your worship count. Let your praise count. Let your giving count. Because the ark that you build will be the ark that's going to shelter you when the showdown comes. In Jesus' name. But being moved with fear, when all these things begin to happen, that inner man has got to reach back and lay a hold on that word. Lay hold on the fire. Get fire back on the altar. Get water back in the baptismal pool. Hallelujah. I'm hearing him say, get fire back on the altar. All right. Holy Ghost, how do we get fire back on the altar? It's by killing out the flesh. Stretching flesh. 
from one end of this altar to the other and die out. The inner man has got to rise up. The outer person has got to diminish. The inner man has got to outgrow the outer man. The flesh must wither. The flesh must wither. I said the flesh must wither. But the inner man must begin to be dominant in my people. For I, the Holy Ghost, said the Almighty God, is the one that breathes. I'm the one that's in your nostrils when you are asleep. I'm the one that causes your belly to pump back and forth with breath because I am God. I am the living God. I'm not a dead God. I'm not an optional God. I'm not an occasional God. I'm not a, a hit and miss God. I am the God. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God that will last ever and ever and ever. There is no end. The gods of this world, the gods of money, the gods of prosperity, they're going to fall. They're going to fall. They're going to fall. But my Lord and my God, the one that issues the birth certificates in the heavenlies, birth certificates are being issued in the heavenlies. There's a new birth being issued in the heavenlies. I see babies being aborted, but their birth, my God, is recorded in the heavenlies. I see the, the spirit of death that's taken over on planet earth. I see the lifeless bodies of my little ones. And in the church world, they're dying. There's a spiritual death just like there's a natural death. There's a spiritual death. I'm looking in upon the sanctuaries this day and I see a spirit of death. I said I see a spirit of death in my house. And it's not the natural death. It's the spiritual death. I said I see death. Holy Makaya, Makaya, Makaya. I see spiritual death in my house. I see the lack of praise. I see the lack of worship. I see the lack of surrender. I see the lack of commitment. I see the lack. There's a lack in my house of total surrender. I see people they're not totally uh, surrendered. I see people halfway living for me. I see a spirit of a spiritual death. My God that closes in. Help us Holy Ghost. Help us. Is there any amens back there anywhere? Amen. How some of kind of. But as it was in the days, I, listen, I just heard from God. He said, I see spiritual death in my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Total, lack of a total commitment. Heard him say this morning. But they got this thing going now. You can break the law and go to jail. They'll let you out. They'll let you out. And I, I told Raymond, I said, you know what? Church houses are emptied out. Jail houses are so full they can't put no more in. What's wrong? It's spiritual death that has touched down the sanctuary of God. It takes more than a few songs and a little message, message, what you want to call it, to get the fire burning. It's going to take some real prayer warriors down to business with God. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. But Noah, being warned of God, of things God yet seen, that got a hold of him, it persuaded him, and he got out there, and he got to build an ark. God says, Noah, you, you, you pitch that thing inside and out. In other words, we've got to be sanctified inside and out. When there's an inward ceiling, there's an outward ceiling. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Well, I ain't hear no amen. Amen. If y'all ain't careful, I'm going to get to preaching. Come on, go ahead. <laughs> but the Lord spoke so much, I'm trying to absorb it. But being born of God, my message is this. Heed the warning. Heed the warning. He condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is of by faith. Heed the warning of God is my message this morning. Prepare that ark for the sake of your household. Hear the warning of God. If the Lord tells us to pray, we better pray. Amen. 
If the Lord tells us to get sold out to God, we, we better do some selling out. Right. But when he said that there's a spiritual death that has hit his people, we better listen. Amen. We better listen. And you talk about the blood. Uh, a church without the blood is a lifeless body. Amen. Uh, I, I thank God for the blood. Amen. I thank God for the blood. Because let me tell you, speaking in tongues would be like a, a chicken cackling without the blood. Amen. There'd be no life in it. That's right. Amen. That's so we focus too much on spitting and tongues, not enough on blood Amen. and the power of overcoming. Amen. Amen. All right. But I'm going to tell you, and I don't know what I've ever had the Lord to speak like you did this morning, but we had better heed the warning. Getting back to some things that's coming on this earth. Uh, again, when they can just send a drone over and, and take your blood pressure, that, that's, that's something. Well, they can take that drone and tell where you're at. That, that's, that's dangerous. I'm telling you, our, our world, our world is in jeopardy. Our, our country is in jeopardy. And if, if we ever are warned of God, God's warning people. But what are we doing with him? What are we doing with his word? What are we doing with Jesus? I mean, when the message comes forth, we hear it. But what are we going to do with it? It's not enough to hear a message. What are we going to do with it? So what will we do with Jesus? What will we do with what he spoke here this morning? I'll have to go back and listen to the tape to even remember what he said. But what I, what I do here, what am I going to do with it? So I want to leave that with you today. What are we going to do with the warning? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, take these words and do with them what I can't do. But help us, Lord, to heed the warning. And whatever you tell us to do, we need to do it. Help us, Lord, to be moved with reverence. Prepare that ark. Our household is at stake to the saving of our house. To the saving of our house. To the saving of our house. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you all if you would, to, let's just come and stand before the altar and say, Lord, wherever I'm not submitted to you, help me, God, to be submitted. Would you do that? God. We don't need music for this, brother. Dean. Hallelujah. Everyone get real, 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 real earnest with the Lord now. And Lord, the things that I need to do to submit, help me with it, Lord. Just help me with it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you, God. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I think I'm going to get on my knees. Praise God.
Lord, it's not connected. Lord, the bone is not connected to the bone. Lord, Jordan is not connected to the joint. Lord, there's got to be a coming together, Lord. As the secret prophesied, God, upon those dry bones. Lord, dry bones in the valley. And oh, God, it took a cross, God, to do the commandment of those dry bones. Lord, look down upon your sanctuary today, God, and bring life. Oh, God, bring life. Bring divine order. Lord God Almighty, my Lord, my God, oh God, Lord, we come against the spirit of death. Lord, we come against that by bleeding the blood. God, by applying the blood. Breathe upon us this morning, my Lord and my God. Breathe, Lord. God, you're not happy. You're not satisfied. Lord, you're not satisfied. Lord, you're not proud of what you're seeing going on in your house. Even this day, you're not proud of it. I said, 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 I I said, I said, I God, I cannot stir the people, but God, you can. Lord, I cannot move the people, but you can. Lord, I'm talking about a Holy Ghost stir. God, I'm talking about a Holy Ghost fire burn. Lord, I want to see the Holy Ghost fire burning. God, I want to see the Holy Ghost manifestation. Lord, I want to see the power of the living God moving, Lord, in the lives of men, women, boys, and girls. Lord, there's been a time that the Holy Ghost would fall on people. God, the Holy Ghost will fall on rulers and they fall, God, on the anointing. There's been a time the Holy Ghost, Lord, would prick the heart. But, oh, God, Lord, my Lord and my God, Lord, let the Holy Ghost prick the hearts one more time. Lord, one more time. One more time, God. You've got to do the pricking. Lord, you've got to do the moving. Lord, you've got to rise up and, God, let your voice thunder like echo. From another world. Never the whole shot. 